this. You're here. The prophecies were true. I live here. Why are the lights off? You made me think there was a blackout. You've brought a light unto my life. Really? Because I feel like you've brought nothing but darkness into mine. What are you doing here? I'm trying to glean insights from scripture. Oh, well, a lot of people do that. I thought you were going to say something weird. And I found my insights. Encoded in hidden messages inside the text. And there it is. Look, see for yourself. I've been studying the original scripture and found predictions hidden inside the letters. This is written in English. Yeah. The original scripture was written in Hebrew. Oh, I'm not gonna learn Hebrew. Okay, I think I've seen enough. You don't understand. There are all kinds of predictions in here. This is the Bible code. It was debunked decades ago. Debunked? I found predictions about world events, political assassinations. Even this YouTube channel is in it. Oh, I don't doubt it. Then you believe. I believe you can get this coding system to say whatever you want it to say, and it doesn't have anything to do with the Bible. Anyone can build a computer program that uses this process to churn through a large manuscript to find whatever messages they want. You couldn't build a process to do this. Yes, I can. And I can show you the hidden predictions found not just in the Bible, but in any large manuscript, like Moby Dick. Good Lord, you can find hidden predictions in Moby Dick? Oh yeah, in fact, I can even find hidden messages in randomly generated letter sequences. <gasps> oh, Dio! Are you pretending to be some sort of priest or monk or what exactly? I'm trying to keep it non-denominational to minimize offensiveness. That's probably the wisest thing you've said so far. Thanks! To be clear, this is not a religious video. Most people, including Bible scholars, agree this Bible code is an absurd way of reading scripture. Instead, we're going to look at the Bible code purely as a data manipulation process. And I'm going to show you how I built my own computer program to find pretty much any hidden messages in any manuscript. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. The Bible code, or Torah code, is nothing new. Rabbis and Bible scholars have been investigating hidden messages in the Bible for centuries. There may have even been rabbis as far back as the 14th century who analyzed scripture by hand. Ugh, that sounds tedious. However, the advent of the personal computer made analysis far more productive. So rabbis, Bible scholars, and mathematicians started looking into it more seriously in the 1980s and 90s. Ilyahu Rips, Dorn Witzum, and Yoav Rosenberg designed computer software to carry out the great rabbi's experiment. In this experiment, the software tried to find the names of famous rabbis as well as their birth and death dates, encoded in the Torah in a way that would suggest that they had been placed there intentionally, presumably by divine guidance. The software was successful in finding the names of these rabbis who were born centuries after the Bible was even written. So the Bible accurately predicted the births and deaths of these rabbis? Well, that's what the creators of the experiment believed when they published their findings in 1994. Then Michael Drosden, an American journalist, went a step further when he published his book, The Bible Code, in 1997. He claimed that all sorts of predictions could be found in the Bible, including assassinations and even the end of the world. Was he right? About the world ending? No, the assassinations. Ah, well. As a matter of fact, Michael Drosnin had a very vitalizing experience with that. In 1994, Drosnin sent a message to Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin telling him that his name was found in the Bible along with a troubling message. Drosnin said, the only time your full name, Yitzhak Rabin, is encoded in the Bible, the words assassin that will assassinate cross your name. Did the Prime Minister do anything? No, he didn't believe it. Did anything happen to him? Well. The next year, Prime Minister Rabin was walking out of a rally for the Oslo Accords when Egal Amir, a right-wing extremist who opposed the Accords, shot Rabin in the chest before being seized. Prime Minister Rabin was rushed to the hospital where he later died from his injuries. See? The Bible Code was right! Well, that's certainly what Michael Drosnin thought. And the assassination prediction definitely gave the Bible Code more credibility, motivating others to investigate it more thoroughly. So, how does the 
Bible code work exactly. The Bible code employs a method called the equidistant letter sequence. This is essentially a skip code. This is where we take all of the letters of the manuscript and skip letters that are the same distance apart from each other in order to form new words. It's sort of like playing a word search game with the letters. The original Bible code was looking at the original Hebrew scripture. But let's take a look at an example from an English translation of the Bible. Here is a passage from the King James Bible that we can examine. First, we remove all of the spaces and punctuation, so we're just left with the letters. Normally, publishers wrap the text to fit the width of the page. But what if we change the word wrapping in order to fit a predetermined length, let's say every 100 letters? If we scan through the columns and look for words, we find the word Bible written backwards. If we then shift the word wrap to be 36 letters wide and scan through the words again, we can find the word code also written backwards. If we change the word wrap again, we see that these two words cross each other and that the B in Bible and the C in code are both found in the original word because. If we believe in this system, we might determine that the Bible is secretly telling us that the Bible code is real. So then you proved it. See, even the music says so. Hardly. This form of searching is incredibly problematic. Why? Drossen was actually able to predict a real assassination. Was he though? When Drossen published his findings, there was a lot of criticism about how he came to find his predictions in the Bible. What were the issues? For one thing, when Drossen's critics investigated his message of assassin that will assassinate, they found that he simplified that message. Using the same code, they found a murderer who will murder unwittingly, suggesting that the prime minister would be associated with an accidental death rather than an assassination. Eh, that's a minor difference. There are other problems with how predictions are extracted. Sometimes words are mistranslated from Hebrew, or letters are interpreted to be abbreviations for bigger words. It's also worth noting that the original Hebrew Torah only recorded consonants and not vowels. Why are there no vowels? Well, the Torah was originally passed down by oral tradition before it was actually written down. So it's really more of an abbreviated shorthand. But since there are no vowels, you have more flexibility in how you can interpret words. It's also important to note that the original Hebrew Torah has different letters depending on which version of the manuscripts you're using. The Dead Sea Scrolls show that different manuscripts of the Torah have slight differences. Yeah, but why would slight differences matter that much? Well, with the skip code, just adding a single extra letter can shift the entire sequence, invalidating words that you already found. You're missing the big picture. Who cares if they're a bit off? How did those words get in the Bible in the first place? Never mind the slight differences. This isn't meant to spell out the future exactly. It's just meant to get us closer to the target. Closer to the target? What is this, some sort of homing device? Homing device. But the biggest problem with this system is that you can basically find whatever you want so long as you have a large enough manuscript. What do you mean? This isn't really a Bible code, it's a text code. It can be used on any large text. Michael Drosnin's critic said that he never disproved that other manuscripts could also have hidden messages in them. What did he say to that? He challenged his critics to find hidden messages in Herman Melville's novel, Moby Dick. Why Moby Dick? It's just a large manuscript that's completely secular. Finding hidden messages in Moby Dick would indicate that this isn't a Bible code, but a code for any text. Did they find anything? Not only did they find similar codes, but Brendan McKay was able to find skip codes in Moby Dick, which could also be interpreted as predictions of the assassination of Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. What? No. Yeah. I'll show you. Here is an excerpt from Moby Dick. Prime Minister Rabin was shot dead by Egal Amir, who studied at the Bar Ilan University and was associated with the underground group Iyal, which modeled itself after the terrorist group Lehi. As Robin was exiting the Oslo Peace Accords, Amir shot at Robin three times, fatally hitting him in the chest. So Moby Dick can also predict the future? Stop with the dramatic music, no. You're missing the point entirely. You can basically find whatever you're looking for, given that your manuscript is large enough and your associations are loose enough. I can even generate my own codes. You can predict the future? I can find whatever words you want me to find in a large enough source text. Let's see what Moby Dick has to say about modern times. If we look at this excerpt, we can see that the words sick and COVID intersect on the letter C describing a place. What place? Wuhan. 
See, it's all right there if you already know what to look for. So Moby Dick predicted COVID? Stop. No, I can even find this channel in there. Data time is there? Oh yeah. Here we see data, time, and in between them, Patreon. Patreon? But this channel doesn't have a Patreon account. It does now. If you'd like to support this channel and get your name in the credits at the end of the videos, click on the link in the description to start your monthly support. But we don't have end credits. Not yet. But you could be the first. So Herman Melville predicted we would get a Patreon? No, you're still missing the point. That was just a shameless plug. This has nothing to do with Herman Melville. I can even get it to work with just random letters. Random letters? I mean, just look at the letters we have here. They already look like random letters. The original text is completely bastardized to fit our context. What if I used actual random letters to start with? How would that work? I'll show you. I can write a simple program that generates a meaningless text source. It's just a pseudo random generator of letters. I generate a string of letters which acts like an alphabet for which letters I want to use. Then I build a for loop that randomly picks a letter and puts it into a large text. I can do this as many times as I like. However, this doesn't really represent real words in the English language. The odds of picking any letter is one out of 26. That means that picking an E is just as likely as picking a Z. That's not how the English language works. English needs a lot of vowels to make words. And so we need to provide a lot of vowels in our random text in order to make it more feasible to find real words in the text. Here is a list of letter frequencies in the English language. On average, the letter E is 56 times more prevalent in the English language than the letters X, Z, J, or Q. So I generate an alphabet that has 56 E's, but only one Z. Once my alphabet is complete, I build my text by randomly picking a letter from it and appending it to a text string. I do this repeatedly to generate my text. The Hebrew Sefer Torah contains over 300,000 characters. The English King James Bible, with both testaments, contains over 3 million characters. Moby Dick contains over 1 million characters. But once we remove all spaces and punctuation, we get about 900,000 letters. So for our experiment, I'm going to generate a text sequence of 1 million letters. The more letters I generate, the more opportunities I create for myself to find hidden words. Then I decide the words that I want to look for and add them to a large regular expression. Since we allow words to be found written either forwards or backwards, I make sure to include the backwards words in my regular expression as well. Then I have the code run through all of the different combinations of letters. I start with a skip code of one, which isn't really a skip since it's including all letters. And I have the regex search for any word down the column. Then I increment to a skip code of two and have the regex pattern search down the first column and then search down the second column. As I increment the skip code, I continually have the regex search down each column looking for any words it finds. When it finds a word, it saves it along with the start and end index. Once I collect several words, I then want to see if they intersect each other. Using the start and end indexes of each word, I can generate a report that shows all of the words that intersect each other in a particular patch of text. I then export this into After Effects, where I can adjust the wrapping of the text in order to eyeball what looks the best visually. This still requires some trial and error in order to get something that looks consistent. But eventually, given enough different intersections, I can usually find something that works for me. Here, I can find sick, COVID, Wuhan. In this other section of the random text, I find Egal Amir, who was part of a Lehigh-style terrorist group, shot Prime Minister Robin dead. So you can predict the future too? No, these letters were randomly generated. You mean you can generate any hidden message you want just from random letters? Well. There are some limitations. I learned early on that it's a lot easier to find many small words rather than one large word. Yitzhak is a terrible name to find in English, not only because it's a whole seven letters long, but also because it uses some of the least common letters in English, Y, Z, K. That's why the Moby Dick prediction only has shorter words that have loose associations. On average, the odds of seven consecutive letters in the English language matching a particular word is about one in eight billion. The odds of matching a five letter word is over one in 11 million. And the odds of matching a four letter word is about one in half a million. Small words are much easier to find than large words are. But still, the odds of finding these words seem really small. It can't just be by chance. The larger the manuscript you have, 
the easier it is to find these candidates. If I have a 1 million letter text, my skip codes can generate hundreds of billions of letters. That's the problem with this system. If you discover a hidden word and then say, oh, the odds of this happening by chance are one in a million, that sounds impressive until you realize that the process you used to get there had hundreds of billions of potential candidates. Also, it's easy to find predictions after the fact. Remember how Drazen accurately predicted the prime minister's assassination? Yeah. Well, he also predicted the end of the world. He said that the world would end between 1998 and 2006. That never happened. Exactly. We remember the successes, but not the failures. <sighs> okay, fine. I guess the Bible code doesn't really work. This isn't limited to the Bible code. This is the problem with plenty of other supernatural claims, like reading tea leaves or horoscopes. Because the predictions are so vague, and because there are so many possible candidates, you can just sort of pick and choose what you want. As long as you ignore all the failures, it can seem compelling. The important thing is to focus on the data in order to find truth. That's what my twin brother and I are trying to do. Oh, we're not twins. Or are we? <laughs>